So I have a unique role at Rackspace. Uh, they asked me to go and study the future. They asked me to go and mostly uh, talk with startups around the world and find out what the bleeding edge is. And um, in doing that, over the last year, I've started seeing a new pattern. And I call it uh, contextual systems or age of context. I'm now writing a book with Shell Israel about that. And that's what I'm going to focus on for the first bit. And then we're going to talk a little bit about these new Google Glasses, because there's a lot of interest in what that means, too. But here's Sergey Brin showing me the Google Glasses for the first time. So this new age we're heading into is an age where the number of wearable computers on us are going up exponentially. I have a basis watch that's studying my heart rate. So other people I've seen are wearing tattoos that have sensors in them that are uh, doing things. These Oakley ski goggles here uh, let you uh, see how fast you're going on the ski slope. There's a little monitor down here in them. Uh, the guy on the left is building uh, glasses that has two 1080p cameras, and it's so hard to see that, they, that there's a camera, but he's, let, he's doing it to uh, uh, let people train in a new way or work in a new way. The uh, eyeglasses here are from two Stanford kids who started this company called Epiphany Eyewear, and it has a 1080p camera built right into the sunglass frame uh, in a way that you can't even see the camera and lets you capture 1080p uh, video. Um, Stephen Wolfram yesterday was speaking. The last time I saw him, he had a Mimoto camera on him that was capturing an image every 30 seconds, and it was just a little, a little square on his, on his shirt. And so this stuff is coming. That's one of the trends I started seeing. And wearable computers, you know, this is the jacket built for the uh, CEO of, uh, of Autodesk to use on stage. It had a bunch of LED lights. It had an Arduino processor. These kinds of things are right now research projects. But soon, fashion designers are going to build this kind of technology into our clothing. The little tags that you see, the green tags, I went to Plantronics. And a Plantronics CTO told me that the shift coming due to these wearable computers like Google Glass is the biggest shift since the World Wide Web came out 20 years ago. The little green things are Bluetooth tags that are spitting numbers into the air and let us do indoor positioning in a new way. Uh, we're seeing innovations in big data, in weird data, in small data, all sorts of database innovations. I'm seeing a new database come out, literally a database technology come out literally every month lately. And uh, the sizes of data is going up. So t Twitter, for instance, is collecting a, t a billion tweets every 36 hours right now. That's extraordinary. And think about all the data that we're c capturing. It's going up exponentially. Added into that, uh, these new sensors that are coming out. I have four sensors on my wrist, six here, seven in my cell phone, and one on my wall with the Nest thermostat that I have. And I just ordered some sensor cubes that have a few sensors to study air quality in my house, and on and on. We're seeing the number of sensors in the world going up, and we call this the Internet of Things, but I think it's deeper than just things. I think there's a, a context that is building. Add to that, we're seeing the amount of social network data going up exponentially. Right now, a billion tweets every 36 hours, and uh, Facebook has a lot more than that, but it's going up exponentially. So in, a, in 18 months, we'll have 2 billion tweets in 36 hours. And same thing with location data. Google is building maps, uh, data about our world, and so is Waze, an Israeli startup. So is... Uh, Foursquare and Facebook check-ins, and the amount of data about the world we're in is going up exponentially. It's getting sharper in resolution. So what does that all mean, these five things mixed together? Well, we're getting a highly personalized world. For consumers, and by the way, this is the guy who was supposed to be on stage with me uh, today. He, he runs PrimeSense, which is a 3D sensor. How many people have a Microsoft Connect in their homes? Yeah, the, the PrimeSense was the guys who uh, designed 
the sensor and licensed it to Microsoft. But now that sensor is a stick of chewing gum, it's higher resolution, it's uh, lower latency, and it's about a, a half the cost that it used to be. So it, it's under $100 to buy this 3D sensor. This 3D sensor is so sensitive that they put it next to a projector and it could tell how hard I was touching the table and it was doing pressure sensors so I could do something on the table which did not have a sensor. The sensor's up here looking at the table, but it's so sensitive that it can do that. The, the 3D sensor, I talked to General Motors and Ford, and they said, wow, we, we can use these sensors. We're gonna put them in cars. We're gonna be able to see your eyelids moving with this kind of sensor. We're gonna tell if you're falling asleep and wake you up with this kind of sensor. We're also gonna know that you're sitting in the passenger seat or the, or the uh, uh, driver's seat because we're gonna be able to do new kinds of face detection. Now, that gets to a freaky line that we're gonna talk about in the second half, the privacy implications of this highly tracked world. Um, here, by the way, um, is a shopping tracking system that they showed me at Consumer Electronics uh, Show where they had these sensors over our heads and they could see when I pulled a box of Cheerios off of the store shelf in real time and I could see and I could be offered deals to take three boxes, you know, 20% off if I take three boxes instead of just one in real time. So this stuff is coming and it is a little freaky. So in addition to turning uh, almost all of our products into highly personalized experiences. When you get into your next car, it's gonna know you're there, right? The, the Tesla already knows it, it, it's my Tesla. In fact, the door handles on the Tesla don't even come out unless I'm near the car with my key. In the future, it's gonna be even more personalized. But the second thing it does, this contextual world is gonna do is bring us a highly anticipatory world. Google Now is a, a first example. How, how many people here have Android phones? Android boys phones, so about half of you. So you guys already have Google now and it tries to get ahead of you. It tries to tell you, hey, you better leave for your next meeting or when you're going, like I'm going to the airport after the speech and it'll, it'll have already my, uh, my travel uh, schedule and my, the gates I need to go to and uh, whether it's on time or not. Uh, if, if I had a, a driving, uh, well, I do have to drive this afternoon, it'll tell me, oh, there's uh, traffic on the way so your, your schedule will be delayed a little bit. In the future, you're gonna be able to see everything in sharp detail. And this is particularly important to businesses. Think about Uber. I used an Uber uh, system on my cell phone to get here this morning, and I could see all of the drivers around town and how, far, how long it would take to get to me to pick me up. But the, the Uber system itself has perfect detail of everything in its business. It knows what's driving the business. In the future, it's gonna get even more contextual. It's gonna know that there's a conference that's gonna end in about half an hour, and it's gonna bring Ubers here to be predictive and get ready for that kind of new traffic that's coming. Uh, this is the eyeglass that I was talking about before. It's built into the sunglass frame, two 1080p cameras. He says he can stream to something like Ustream using this device for about an hour and a half on one small battery. The battery for the Google Glass is right here, and it's about the same. The, this new system for businesses is gonna change how much they know about us. Today, I live right by the Ritz-Carlton in Half Moon Bay, and when I go in there, they don't really know that I am a regular there. They, they just don't know. And certainly, when I come to the Ritz in London, they don't know anything about me. They, they don't know that I am a regular at a Ritz somewhere else in the world. That will change over the next five years or so. In a, in a very deep way. Already, here's my uh, friends who started the social media club, uh, Christy Wells. She met Paloma. She went to Facebook. She liked Paloma Faith on Facebook. And now the system, the industry, the music industry uh, uh, can see that in live time. Audience.fm helps musicians track their audience and know their audience in much more detail. A personalized experience is coming because of this world that's based on where you are. So uh, TagWet is a new startup that shows me Facebook offers near me on my phone and Google Glass is gonna do the same kind of thing. As I walk around, it's gonna be able to, to, to do things based on where I am. And that world is coming pretty quickly. 
Um, you know, I went to uh, Harmon Kardon, which is also JBL, the guys who make speakers. They make the speaker system in my Toyota Prius. And I talked with uh, Charles Sprinkle there, and he, he, he showed me all sorts of new ways that he's working. He's using 3D printing to build new speaker cabinets. He's using Arduino processors to test out new kinds of compression algorithms that he's designing. Um, and he's thinking deeply about uh, context, how he's gonna personalize the speakers to us, to our listening habits, to our ears. Uh, Tempo is uh, a new uh, iPhone app, it come, came out of SRI, um, and you, many of you, how many people here have the Tempo uh, calendar on their iPhone so far? And just a few. This is a, a much better calendar than the Apple calendar. It goes into your Gmail, into your Google calendar, and looks for context. So for instance, on my Google calendar one, one afternoon, I, I wrote Flipboard, I, that's all I wrote. It went in and found all the email I'd ever sent to Flipboard and put it into the calendar. And it found the address, which was very interesting because they had just moved their address around the corner and it found the new address out on the internet and put that in my description field, in my address field. It is a, a real time saver to have these new contextual technologies that learn about you by looking at your email, looking at your behaviors as you uh, live your life and assist you in living your life. I believe it's gonna affect every product and service. GoPro started 200 yards from my house. It's a small camera that uh, a lot of surfers and skiers use. But they're talking about how do we work with Facebook to when I take a picture, I can capture everything about the room, about what was going on, everything that was tweeted, everything that was Facebooked in public Facebook, or all the names. We're starting to see this kind of world appear when, when we take a picture and, and it recommends tags to us and content to us, but in the future it's gonna go even deeper into, it, the, into the internet and it's, I believe it's gonna affect every product in the next decade. <coughs> uh, an example of a product that's changing due to this new contextual stuff is uh, this headphone. Uh, now the headphone didn't change, what he's doing is putting a little sensor on the headphone so he can tell where, he's, wh where the listener is looking and then he's doing audio processing to keep the band in front of us. So right now, the headphone, the band moves as I turn my head, but he's gonna do processing so the band always stays in the same place. And so as I turn my head, the band will always be much more natural and he's doing other kinds of processing too to even broaden the sound stage. It's pretty, pretty cool and a really dramatic difference when you listen to it. Because of the cost of sensors is coming down exponentially, we're gonna see new kinds of sensors, new kinds of things, and I believe it's gonna change our lives in ways that we don't know how to predict properly. Uh, here's a new sensor coming out this uh, summer. It costs $20, it hooks onto the top of your iPhone, and it's a breathalyzer. It analyzes how much alcohol is in your breath stream. Now, police have had this for years, right? That's how they tell whether you're drunk or not when they pull you over. But the police ones are three, four, eight hundred dollars. This is twenty dollars. So now my brother who owns a bar is going to buy a few of these and leave them around the bar and let people play new kinds of drinking games, which might increase his sales and might save some lives because he might call a cab for somebody who is drunk and not, not able to drive. It's a new kind of augmented reality and we, there are several European companies like Matayo that have developed augmented reality systems, but they're getting sharper and less jittery and deeper and, and more interesting. And so you, you can hold your iPhone or your uh, iPad or your Android tablet over something and augment the ex experience. You see this in Lego stores in the United States where you pull a box of Legos off the store and hold it in front of a camera and then it shows you, it augments the model, uh, it shows you a virtual model of what that Lego actually will look like in once you get it done with your kid and you can show your kid, hey, do you like this one? You know, let's build this together. It's, uh, con context is gonna bring us better health. We're seeing all sorts of new sensors that are coming out for our skin. Uh, my friend's a diabetic, actually Shell Israel's diabetic too, and he's uh, looking forward to wearing a new sensor that'll study his uh, 
uh, blood sugar level and be able to help him moderate that and use less insulin and eat better. Um, and that's happening. I went to Qualcomm and they're building a range of devices that use a, a Qualcomm wi a wireless network that's very easy to use for anybody to just come home with a new device and hook it up to the doctor and the doctor can monitor you from home. So you're gonna spend a little, a, a little less time in the hospital or in the doctor's office and more time at home where it's cheaper for the uh, insurance companies to deal with. It's a new kind of marketing. A, a friend of mine runs this company called Bin Tank in California. And he lives in Sonoma in the wine region. But this, th this uh, company studies any time you say something related to wine on Twitter. So he is seeing 1.1 million tweets today that have something to do with wine. So you might have said, I love Chardonnay, or I'm drinking Sutter Home, or uh, you know, saying something about wine. And he's building profiles on you. And that, and that sounds a little scary, but uh, it lets the wine industry know their customer better. And now he's putting geofences around the wineries in California. So when you go to Nap and you actually go and tweet or Foursquare or Instagram or Facebook from one of those wineries, the winery will know that you're there and the next winery will know that you've been other places and will know that you're walking into their uh, door and they're gonna be able to serve you better because of that. In fact, some wineries are already starting to put you into different queues without you realizing it. Some wineries have queues for Instagram users because they know you're gonna be sharing their brand visually on the internet, so they wanna take you on a, a visual tour rather than just on a wine tour. And you're, you're starting to see some real in, innovation in this area. So wrap that all up, it, it means that we're getting um, systems that are predictive, that are uh, assistive, and for businesses, uh, they're getting their, uh, a much sharper detail on their business and they're gonna be, be able to do things like predictive inventory. I talked to Facebook about that, that uh, they're gonna, when you gift somebody something, they're gonna know that that person is uh, uh, coming in their door. And when you do things like use open table to reserve a space and they can look at your past behavior, they'll know how much inventory. Or here, the taxi example, you're gonna, the Ubers are gonna know to bring some more taxis here because we're all gonna need taxis when we leave tonight. Um, and when they're gonna know us in a much deeper detail, and which it sounds a little scary, but it also means much better customer service because I'd, I really would like to go to the Ritz in London and have them have my Oban whiskey ready for me and not, have to go through the whole thing of explaining what I like. So now I'd like, to, so that's my context speech and we can talk about that, but I, just walking around here, there's a lot of inf interest in these Google Glasses. <laughs> and so let, let me talk a little bit about that and then I'll take a lot of questions about any of this stuff, context, privacy, or Google Glass. The Google Glass, so I got these a week ago. I was at the Google I.O. conference a year ago when they first announced them and uh, Sergey said, I'm they're going on sale and I started running and I didn't even care about the price and the price was pretty high. It's 1500, I paid $1,500 for these plus tax, so 1600 something dollars. Um, and they, they do a few things, so let me turn them on. Okay, Glass, take a picture. And so I just took a picture of you and then I can share this to uh, Path or I'm gonna put it to Google Plus Public so that just went to my Google Plus account so you can all see what it, show, what it shows when I see. So before getting these, I had all sorts of visions of augmented reality and weird privacy problems because I thought, oh man, they might be on all the time and recording everything somebody says to me. <laughs> now they, <laughs> the battery here is pretty small. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, I recorded a six minute video and used 20% of the battery. So that gives you an idea of how much time they can be on. You notice it already shut off. It is not on right now. It's not recording. It's not uh, taking pictures. To, to take pictures, I have to turn it on and you'll see a little light in my glass. And if you see somebody with the Google Glass with the light on, then they might be recording it. So let's do that. Okay, Glass, take a, uh, record a video. There we go. And we're recording a video right now. Now the video is only 10 seconds. 
unless I touch this little button on the top, then I can extend it. So now I'm gonna extend it and record you a little bit. And uh, it sees uh, a, a space like this, so. It's not really high resolution. It's 720p video, and it's, it looks pretty good on Google Plus when I, if I put that up. Um, and you see, I put several examples up already. Um, but I can't zoom it, so if I wanted to read what that guy's looking at, I, I, it's not that good a resolution. It's not a, as good a resolution as my DSLR, so if I really wanted to take a picture of him and then go home and study what he was re reading, I would use my Canon or my Nikon DSLRs. Um, it does things like um, it calls, so there's a speaker here. Uh, there's a microphone that's, that mostly hears me and hears you a little bit. Uh, you can actually see that in some of the videos I've done. That, uh, like, if you talk to me, it's pretty dim. It's pretty hard to hear other people. And they do that because the, to protect the glass from other people taking control of, of the UI. Because if you're next to me and you're really loud, you can say, and, and it's on the screen, like the OK glass screen, you can now yell out and do something, right? <laughs> Which is sort of funny. Um, <laughs> but it lets me get directions, so I can say, uh, let me turn it off so it doesn't do it. Uh, so I could do OK Glass, get directions to um, Checkpoint Charlie, and it would pull that up and start directing me and navigating me. The map is cool. It's different than on your cell phone, it, it, because as I turn and look at different places, the map itself turns. In fact, let me see if I can pull that up. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't share the glass on the screen. I didn't have the Google system to do that. Um, let me just pull up my app. My glass. So there's an app on my Android phone. It's paired through blue, low power Bluetooth to my Android phone. There's no network connection, so I'm sorry. I might not be able to do this. But you can see when I turn on the glass, so it says OK glass. And then uh, you see the commands here. And the commands, by the way, move as I move up and down. So let's do that again. OK glass, take a picture. And that's what I see, and you see the picture there, right? So, and that's sort of what I see in the glass. And I, you can see a map, you can see text. Um, in fact, let me see if I can uh, scroll through here a little bit. Yeah. So here's all my pictures. And here's an a interview that I have tomorrow, or on Friday, an email that came in. And um, here's another email about a video I did. And here's some interviews tomorrow. And here's a picture from Path. So it shows me my friend's Path. Path is an app, an early app on the uh, Google Glass already, so I can see my friends pass, and I can see uh, various things. These are some of the photos that people were taking today in, in the hallways here. And there's Hermione, and here's another path. Uh, yeah. So, oh, it crashed. Sorry. I was wondering why people were laughing. So, this is why it won't be released until next year, because <laughs> it it does have some. Uh, some issues, but anyways, you get an idea of what, there we go, some of the pictures, there. So you get an idea of what, you're, what I'm seeing. Um, it does not do augmented reality. So, so they made some real design choices. I think, you know, these glasses, I, I think they made some choices to keep these very low cost. The processor is very small and not very fast. The camera is not the highest resolution camera I've ever seen. I, you know, a, a, a camera on the new Samsung Galaxy 4 is much sharper than the camera here. Um, the battery is pretty small and, and is, is lightweight because it doesn't want, you don't want it to be too heavy or, or lopsided and you don't want it to be uncomfortable on your face. And it, it, for me, after uh, wearing it for two days, I, I almost forget that it's on. In fact, yesterday I caused a lot of a lot of uh, d debate in the press because I wear it to bathrooms and you forget, you forget that you have them on. And so people are like, hey, at least you should do that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you, I forget they're on and, and I, they have already become a part of my life. I, I believe I will never live another day of my life without some sort of wearable computer on my face. It's that useful already. 
Um, it keeps me from having to look at my cell phone, which uh, if I'm talking to you, uh, you know, it's nice to have a little lightweight thing right there. And you can see me changing my, um, my uh, uh, center of focus from you to this thing. Uh, but it's far less disruptive than changing my focus from you to this phone, you know, this thing in my pocket. Um, what else do you want to know about it? So that, that's, I'm sure lots of people have questions. So there's microphones here, so I'd be happy to take some questions.